So he starts to roam the streets at night And he learns how to steal And he learns how to fight And he can't go YWC, this is your wrestling genius, Marco Rose. And I know everyone has been talking about Brodus Clay and the Funkasaurus and 15 reasons why I love him and 15 reasons why I hate him. And he's only debuted one fucking match. But to let people know, I love the Brodus Clay character. I think it's going to be freaking great. Give it time. Enough said. But there's this event happening in a couple of weeks. Uh... Uh, they throw you over the top rope and the winner gets to main event WrestleMania. What's the, uh, oh yeah, the Warrior Rumble. And this is my top five Warrior Rumble matches and my top five Warrior Rumbles. So now let's get this started because, hey, it is coming up in a couple of weeks. Why not talk about it, you know? <laughs> but anyway, number five, you have Chris Benoit taking on Chris Jericho 2001 Royal Rumble. Now, this match was awesome in everything you look for in a ladder match. Great wrestling, great storytelling, high spots, and high bumps. And as Vince McMahon will tell you, I never recall a match of that magnitude. I, I never had a sports entertainer named Chris Benoit. Yeah, he did, and we know that. But this match was great. Came in number five. Let's go on to number four. Triple H versus Cactus Jack. Warrior Rumble 2000. You want to talk about putting people over? Mick Foley would be the god of putting people over because he put over a lot of people. Randy Orton, Edge to be named. And he also put, in, put over one of the greatest of all time, Triple H. Now, I know a lot of people go, Kyle Triple H, has, he has too much power and he's God now, but kind of he deserves it because he's been with the company forever. He's been the main guy. He's put on great matches. Fuck what anyone says about him. But uh, this match here solidified him as that badass. I mean, because him and Cactus Jack put on a fucking show. You had the bar wire. You had the stairs. You had the fucking chairs. And they put it all out there on the line. And Triple H... End up getting this win. Great match. And just check that out. This is what, you know, wrestling back then it was all about. It was great. You entertained and fucking hardcore. There was some good hardcore shit. Uh, number three, you have The Rock versus Mankind. Royal Rumble 99. Oh, my God. This match was the absolute meaning of attitude. The match bill going into this was awesome. And you had the most memorable moment, memorable moment or moments, as you will say, as each brutal chair, chair shot that Mick Foley took in the head. Oh, my fucking God. And I know people are like, oh, no, this is just an attitude era countdown. You're just an attitude era, Mark. And people kill me with that, especially you have the smarts on here that say the attitude era wasn't that great. And they get two viewers out there to actually believe the Attitude Era wasn't great. And you sat and watched the Attitude Era for most of your fucking life. But you let people on here who seem like they're smart tell you and convince you that it wasn't all that great. You thought it, If you thought it was great at first, you was right at first. Because the Attitude Era was great. Hindsight is 2020. Because people get on here and say, oh, Mark. Oh, Mark, the Attitude Era, it did too much for the fans. It gave them too much. Now that superstars of today can't get over now because of the Attitude Era. Fuck that shit. Attitude Era was fucking awesome. They loved what they do. They put their body on the line for the fans, and every fucking body was entertained, and it saved the WWE. Remember that saved the WWE. And it wasn't no A show and B show back then. They was yeah, they was bringing it on both Raw and SmackDown. They wasn't just bringing it on one show. They was bringing it on both. And you expect people to buy into the bull that they put on here now? Most of the bull they put on TV now? And you want to blame Attitude Era for it? No, they should be taken from the Attitude Era to make themselves want to step it up. And you think about it. Wrestling even wasn't as, you know, 
it didn't cost much back then to goddamn want to see wrestling as it does now. It costs fucking what? 40, 50 bucks to watch this shit now? The shit that they put on TV now compared to the shit they was doing in the fucking attitude. You know what? That's another goddamn story for another damn day. I will save that. We're going to go into number fucking two. John Cena versus Umaga 2007. Now, I know folks are like, oh my God, you put a John Cena match in the top five. Aren't you a John Cena hater? Yes, I am. And I want to clear this up to people who don't know my reasons for being a John Cena hater. Okay. Back then, now this was my peak at my highest John Cena hating peak. In 2007, I hated fucking Cena. But my hate for Cena more then is I wanted to see somebody beat his ass because he was just so unstoppable. I just wanted somebody to come beat his ass. And it interested me. It's because I paid for to see him get his ass beat, even though he was just his top face. I wanted to see him get his ass whooped. But now I'm just tired of seeing him because his matches suck. And people say he was a bad wrestler. Then yeah, he was he wasn't all great. He wasn't bad. He could the thing about John Cena his matches back then is that he tried. He put effort into his matches. He tried to put on great matches, in which in a lot of ways he did. He showed more effort back then. Like I said, he wasn't the best wrestler, but you seen, you go look at Cena's matches, he put effort compared to the match most of the matches he's had now from what 08 until now. Probably no, middle of 07 until now. I will go ahead and say. But uh yeah. Number two, this had it all. It had uh, it had great storytelling, had high spots, and it had a great ending with John Cena taking off the turnbuckle rope, using turnbuckle ropes actually to choke out Umaga in the STFU position and ended up winning it, counting him out with Umaga passing out because Umaga would not stay down the whole match. We was like, how the fuck? He go win. I was like, well, Maga go kill him when he gained consciousness. But it didn't happen. Cena wins. But going to number one, Kurt Angle versus Chris Benoit, 2003 Warrior Rumble. All I can say is two of the greatest wrestlers of all time fighting. Enough said. Check that out. You love technical, great storytelling, great ending, great Everything about these matches with two great technical wrestlers as these two, you will enjoy this match. It's like I did at number one, Chris Benoit, Kurt Angle. All three. Now let's get to the Warrior Rumbles. Now we have the Warrior Rumbles. Coming in at number five is the 2011 Warrior Rumbles. Simply put, because it was the first 40-man rumble ever. The biggest rumble ever match. Which amazed me. And the fact that it really did serve its purpose. It put over a ma uh, the breakout star in Alberto Del Rio. Now, I know a lot of people aren't wanting high on him. And thought it was too early. But I think they was trying to jump on his train. Because he was really getting over. His character was, you know... Kind of to me, kind of original. I know people make comparisons, but I liked his character. But uh, even though he did main event uh, mania, which really pissed me off, I thought it was really good, especially the ending when Santino came in and I, for that the moments I really thought he was going to come in and throw Alberto Del Rio out of the ring because that would have been such a surprise thing for WWE to do. And Santino to actually main event mania? Oh, God, the internet world would have been going crazy with hate over this probably, more than likely. So, uh, that's comes in at number five. But at number four, you have the 1997 Warrior Rumble. I like this Warrior Rumble because, to me, it signified Austin as a legit star. I know people be saying, like, King of the Ring is what did or whatever when he did Austin 316. But I think it was actually more of this because this is probably one of the most controversial Royal Rumbles ever. Like, Austin actually got thrown out by Bret Hart. But the referees was distracted by Terry Funk and Mick Foley, which was having a feud for brawling outside or whatever. So the referees didn't see him get thrown out. And Austin snuck his way back in and got and threw Bret Hart over the top rope at one. 
in the most controversial fashion ever, and I enjoyed that. And that was the start, of course, to the legend, as we know now, one of the most popular stars of all time, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Number three, we have the Royal Rumble 2007. I truly love this one because of the ending, honestly. This was the first glimpse we had of uh, HBK and The Undertaker going in the last two minutes of the Rumble, and they put on a show. I mean, it was back and forth, back and forth. Like, who's going to throw who out it? It was just a lot of great things that happened, and uh, truly, and I loved who the winner was at the end. The Undertaker who finally got his Warrior Rumble win after so many years. This is why this comes in at number three. Check that out. Number two. Royal Rumble 2008. Yes, and I'm going to tell you why. First off, the number one and the number two participants in the Rumble, which everyone is anticipating. Who's number one? Who's number two? Just to see, you know, if the person who is number one and two will probably, you know, last to probably the full Rumble. Number one and number two was HBK and The Undertaker. And I was like, wow, coming from their spectacular performance the year before. And then later on in the uh, Rumble, you had Roddy Piper make a surprise return. And you had Superfly Jimmy Snooker make a surprise return after that. And when those two hit the ring, as they call it, time stood still, that was a great moment. Because you, if younger uh, fans don't know Piper and Snooker, to have a few, especially like Roddy Piper crushing him over here with a coconut. So, like, time to stood still for this moment. It was great as those two went off. And, of course, the number 30 entry and the winner of the 08 Royal Rumble. Now, I'm going to let y'all know. I didn't expect a surprise. I expected it to be Ric Flair somebody because Ric Flair was the only one like who wasn't in the Rumble yet. So I thought it was Flair. And I remind you again that this guy, who was number 30, was supposed to be out for a year. So <laughs> I just thought my year was going to start off great. Yeah, but number 30 was John Cena. And oh my God, I jumped up with so much fucking emotion. I was like, no! 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 Are you fucking serious? No, I, I was... I, I can't even really just show you how I was. That's just a sample of what I was. But when it actually happened, oh my God, I was throwing stuff. I was so emotional about it. And he ended up winning. Fine, but I like this because it brought so much emotion out of me. I think that was the, like... Only Rumble that brought so much emotion from me from, you know, top to bottom. But number one, of course, and I think this should be most people's uh, number one Warrior Rumble because, my God, the legends that was all in this match and uh, just everything fucking about it. I, <laughs> Ric Flair... Hogan, Sid Vicious, Macho Man, Jake the Snake, list goes on. They had fucking all these fucking legends in one match, and the winner received the WWF title at the time. And Ric Flair came in number two, three, okay, two or three, ended up winning. And this here, it had everything. He had the stars you wanted, it had the controversy you wanted, and it just did everything fucking perfectly. And this reason is why it's my number one, Warrior Rumble 92. And this has been my video. And this has been my time. And, of course, check out my two guys down there. Subscribe to them. The Queen of Wrestling, CCDML. I'm talking about she's a true, a true female shooter you can be proud of. And won't send you random ass questions on your channel comments. And check out the funniest guy in the YWC, Master Bad Guy. If you like to laugh and you like to just fucking laugh your fucking ass off, this is who you need to check out. But this has been my time. This is your wrestling genius, Marco Rose. 
and tell me what you think comment like dislike what's your favorite what's not your favorite and everything else but anyway peace out represent the gurus of greatness and i'll see you next time